Hey, what's up guys? It is Coach Matt over here at Primal Athlete Training Center doing a video analysis of Isaiah. Now Isaiah had sent me this video a few months ago, but I never received it, so he resent it today and want to take a quick look. Um, as you can tell, Isaiah is a glide shot putter. Um, he didn't tell me anything too much about the throw in his email. I don't think I don't have anything written down as far as distance or how long he's been throwing. But in glide shot, like we always explain, glide shot is um, a very simple machine where the rotational shot is like the internal combustion engine. A lot of moving parts, a lot of pieces, everything has to flow together. Glide shot is like a seesaw. It's only got you know three or four basic parts to it, but if one of those parts breaks down, it's catastrophic. Um, with the internal combustion engine, you know, with that rotational movement, if something breaks, it can sometimes still go okay. You know, if you have one spark plug that isn't firing correctly, you'll still be able to drive your car. If you have a uh, exhaust leak, you'll still be able to drive your car. Um, you know, if your frame of your car breaks in half, it's off the road. So same thing here with uh, the glide shot. If there's one part of this throw that breaks down or does not work well, you're kind of screwed. So we're going to take a look at this a few times. He has it in uh, slow motion at the end. So I'm just going to keep bringing it back here and letting it play. And you start to see a little bit about what's going on. He's kind of jumping and throwing at the end. And he's kind of opening up a little bit too early as he jumps and throws. So those are the two things I can really see. Looking at this in uh, kind of a real time, even though it is slow motion at the end, looking at it in real time. So let's go through here, take a look kind of frame by frame and see what's happening. So we start in the back of the circle. This is the big part in the back. In the back of the circle, what I always want to see is when the athlete's ready to glide, you've got the shoulders about the same height as the butt. And you can see here your head and shoulders is a little bit taller than your butt. So let's work on getting a little bit more relaxed and getting more of a flat back where the shoulders and the butt are at the same height. So get a little bit lower in the back. The other big thing that I'm seeing is you push off your toe in the back of the circle. You can see here the foot goes flat, but then watch. Right there, you can kind of see how your heel starts coming off the ground first, and you're flexing your calf. So what happens here, because you're pushing off your toe, you're not able to get full extension of your leg. So we want to get a full extension, a big, powerful extension. So I want you to lift the toe and drive off the heel. Right, so little stuff in the back that we can con continuously work on. Not really the big things of the throw that I want you to fix but drive off the heel on the back and keep your head and your shoulders level with your butt. You can see here how now your head and shoulders are really, really above your butt. So as we continue to go through, your right foot comes down in a really good position. It looks like you're in or very close to being in the front half of the circle. But here's where a lot of your throw starts to fall apart. So you can see here you're already opening up a little bit too early. So you got this girl back here holding the clipboard. You should be looking at her and pointing at her with your left hand until this left foot touches down to the ground. So I always tell my athletes the left foot is the trigger. You are not allowed to open up or take your eyes or your hand, whatever's pointing at back here. You cannot take your eyes off of that object until this left foot touches the ground. And then once the left foot touches the ground, you work from the ground up. You turn your feet, your knee, and your hip all together. So the right foot, your right knee, and your right hip will turn down the middle of that throwing sector at the same time that your left foot turns and points down the throwing sector and your left heel touches the ground. Then you can explode with the legs and then your upper body comes through. But you can see here the upper body is already coming through before the left foot touches the ground. So what I want to see is when this right foot lands, 
within one to two frames of a video, I want to see the left foot on the ground. So the right foot has landed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like eight frames before it gets down on the ground. And look at how wide open you are. We can start to see your face. We can start to read what's on your uh, singlet. We can start to kind of see the right arm and the right elbow coming through. So we've got to keep you closed a little bit more. So I want your eyes looking back at this girl. I want your left hand pointing at this girl. I don't want to see you peeking and looking at where you're going to throw because now all of your weight is in between your feet. And we got to keep your weight back behind that right foot. So the big way to fix this, and sort of a quick way of fixing it, is to think of this left foot as the trigger. Or if you were a cannon, another very simple machine, if you are a cannon that's going to fire a cannonball, this is the wick burning down and touching the gunpowder. So nothing happens until that wick burns down and then, boom, touches the gunpowder. Soon as that wick, or your left foot, touches the circle, touches the gunpowder, then explosion can happen. But if you explode before this happens, it's going to be a catastrophic disaster. Okay. Also, you drop your heel a little bit. So we've got a few things to work on here, man, but the big ones are we're going to stay up on that right toe, and then as soon as your left foot touches the circle, then we can start to throw. You're just throwing and opening up a little bit too early. So keep your eyes back, keep your hand back, and stay closed. Stay in that wrapped up, closed position. Now this position right here, this is what's going to lead to you being a jump and thrower. And I want you to jump and throw. We've explained this a lot of times. It's like a quarterback getting chased out of the pocket, and he has to jump and throw to his tight end. You don't want to do that. You want to set your feet, just like a quarterback throwing a Hail Mary. Take some time, set your feet, get your whole body into the movement. Because you see what happens here, you've already opened up. So that means your feet are never going to be able to turn ahead of your upper body. Your upper body has already opened up, so it's already too late. So what happens? The weight shifts. See how your weight shifts onto your left? How your hips are sliding from your right side? to your left side. You see that? Then because you're already open, see how that right foot still has not turned? Your right foot, your right knee are still pointing over here somewhere. At this point they should be pointing down the middle of the sector. So your toe should be pointing toward the middle of the toe board, the middle of the sector. Your right knee should be pointing toward the toe board toward the middle of the sector. That means your hips and your belly button are going to start to point and you still have contact with the ground. But now look at the problem that's been created. You know as a thrower you've got to get your hips down the middle. What's the only way you're going to be able to get your hips down the middle? Is if you lift your right foot up off the ground. So let's see. Here it comes and it's off the ground. See how you're starting to drag it? It's off the ground at this point, and your hips are facing the camera instead of facing down the middle. See that? So that is a jump and throw. We don't want to jump and throw. Also, flick that right hand out to the right. So don't jump and throw. Push the earth down. I want you to push the cement pad down deeper into the dirt. Push the earth down and then flick your hand out to the right. Don't shoot it like a basketball where you flick your hand down. Flick your hand out to the right. So big things to work on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one, keep your eyes back looking at an object and your left hand looking at an object until your left foot touches the ground. Then once your left foot touches the ground, work from the ground up. Turn your feet, your knees, and your hips down the middle of that sector, all as one mechanical unit. Just boom, turn them down the middle. 
that's going to create the tension and the separation in your in your midsection. Then you can throw the left arm, block, and push with the right. So you just got to work on letting the lower body do things first. So push. See how you're leading with your head? You're leading with your upper body. You're opening your upper body right there. You're shifting your upper body. And then you're jumping and throwing. Which when you can no longer use your legs, that's all upper body. So you are the classic example of a coach that says you don't use your legs or you don't get your legs into the throw. That's the reason why. So stay back. Keep your eyes back and your head back at something back here. That's going to keep your weight back. And then when that left foot touches the ground, work from the ground up. Toe, knee, hip, all at the same time. Turn your feet, your knees, and your hips down the middle of the throwing sector. Then you can explode, block, and throw. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if anything else pops up. Um, and as always, guys, we're going to try to do one or two of these whenever I have time. I don't have a ton of time right now because it's summer and uh, the gym is really busy with all of our athletes being off season, coming in you know, two to three times a week. So things are a little bit crazy for me, but we're going to try to do a few more of these um, during the week. So if you guys have any questions, you can always email me and also keep an eye out for a real high level advanced personal um, type of coaching that we're going to be offering starting in the fall. Talk to you guys soon.